Good afternoon. Thank you for coming uh, to the, in this lovely uh, summer, London summer afternoon, to listen to Jorge and the other speakers instead of going out and have drinks with friends. Thank you very much for making us proud for having you as patients and for your participation in this very significant event. Obviously, how can I do closing remarks without being here? But, <laughs> <laughs> but I will try my best. So first of all, a comment about clinical trials. What upsets me really in clinic is when a patient tells me, well, do you think that I can be used as a guinea pig? I can, I can answer back and say, do you think that I want more work to do through a clinical trial? <laughs> Do you think that I do it for myself? Do you think that myself or Professor Kabel need more publications or the unit more? No, we don't need. We don't need. We try to introduce new tools for diagnosis and for treatment. If you ask me what are the challenges globally in the neuroendocrine world, I can tell you the top secrets. The very first top secret in which the industry is trying to spend much more money is the early diagnosis. I can see many of you, I can very easily remember many of your stories saying to me that I've been going through my GP for many, many years and get IBS diagnosis. This is the most important challenge globally for the net world to increase the physician's awareness about the disease. So we can pick up the disease early before it spreads and resect it, remove it with surgery. The big challenge. The second challenge is uh, how we can create the optimal model to do what? To predict disease behavior. I can give you an example. I have two patients at the same time with the same tumor, with the same tumor bulk in them, with the same histology. And I see them today. They're asking me, both of them, how I'm going to do in five years. Actually, I cannot tell them. And one of those patients in two years progresses significantly, and the other patient is stable and feels well for 10 years. And both of them presented the same way, the same age, if you like, same comorbidities in the same day. So we need more tools. One of the tools was mentioned in one of Jorge's slides, this CalmNet trial. I'm not telling this because I'm the principal investigator of this trial, <laughs> but because it is based on a very, very important research that is being done at Royal Free, the circulating tumor cells. We feel that these cells not by themselves, but in combination with other information, can help us create what? The ideal predictive model. Why do we need this? Because if we know from the day one that the patient is going to do badly, even a slow growing tumor in this particular patient is going to behave more aggressively, we can be more aggressive from the very beginning. And who knows, we may change dramatically the disease outcome. And the third challenge in the net world is when you have a box full of weapons to deal with the enemy, some of you work in the army, <laughs> we don't know which weapon to use first. And still we need more trials to prove this. Because if you have to choose between five weapons, so far, you are based on your experience and on some published series in the literature, what kind of studies? Retrospective, retrospective from the, from the past, not prospective. And this is something that clinical trials, which are prospective, starting from now, going forward, will answer. For all these three challenges, we do need your encouragement, we do need your participation, and always we do need your feedback. All of us are here for you.
and all of us are the same team. All of us are the same team, and we have only one enemy, the cancer. Thank you.